Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at the idea of modularization. What that simply means is breaking down a program into little packages or smaller packages. Because if you're writing a code, it could be 10,000 lines, it could be 100,000 lines, it could be millions of lines of code. And if that's all written as one big single program, it's hard to follow what's going on, it's hard to debug it, there can be a lot of issues with it. So rather than um, have it all as one big chunk, we can break the program down into little sub-programs. And we call that process modularization. So if we look at the code over here, we can see a big long lump of code. Let's imagine that some bits are repeated in the code. So in green, we can see bits of code that are being repeated. Um, so if that code is repeated over and over again, rather than have to rewrite the same function, the same method, it could be code for checking if number is prime, it could be code for swapping two values, whatever it is, it could be for calculating factorial. Rather than have the same bit repeated, if there's some way we could ju just extract that out, wrap it around in a handle, and rather than actually put the code in the program, call that handle instead or that name. Um, the term we'll use is either a method or a function, or a module is fine, I'm fine with that, or a subroutine or a procedure. So different programming languages have different terminology for that. I'm happy to stick with the term module or method for the moment, but in some books you'll see the term, the, the term being referred to as creating a function, or creating a procedure, or creating a subroutine in older languages. It's a good idea to do this because one of the fundamental concepts in software design is not to reinvent the wheel. If you've got a bit of code that does something already, there's no point rewriting it again and again and again. If you've got a bit of code that does something, wrap it up in a module, give it a handle, and then don't ever, you don't ever need to rewrite that again. You just need to call that name and let that code take care of things. So if we think about our prime number algorithm again, which we did, we know there's in essence two parts to it. There's the first part of the program that checks if the number is prime, and then there's the second part of the program that prints out whether the number is prime or not. Now let's say we were writing a program that we had to check if a number is prime and do some kind of encryption on it or something like that. Then we wouldn't necessarily want to print out it's prime or it isn't, we just want to calculate whether it's prime or not. So the idea of having a program that just simply checks if something is prime and returns either true or false, it either is or isn't prime, but doesn't print out on the screen, might be useful as a, as a, a, a library function or a code we could then use in a different program. So, as we said, the first part checks if the number is prime and the second prints out the result. So let's create a module for the checking if a number is prime bit. We do it like this. The key difference really is we use the word module instead of program. So now this is a module, it's called Prime Checker, and the program Prime Checker does exactly what the, the program did before, except it doesn't print out a value. Instead, what we say is it returns, and it returns the variable is prime. And if the variable is prime is true, it'll return true, and if the variable is prime is false, it'll return false. So once we've got this module now, this function, this method, this library call, this subroutine, this procedure, whatever we want to call this method. Once we have it canned and safe now, all we need to do is call the name prime checker and pass in a value A and it'll check whether A is prime or not and it'll return true or false. So now we change what the program was initially, this is it initially, to what it is now, slightly shorter. So now all we need to do is say, how do we check if number is prime? We call the module prime checker, and if prime checker returns false, then the module, then the, the number is not prime, and if it returns true, then the number is prime. So let's look at that module again. The module reads in a value, it checks if the number is prime, it returns false, if the number is not prime and returns true, if the number is prime. So that's the code there. So now we've got a handle or a name or a, a way of invoking that method simply by calling the, the term is prime checker. And it really reduces our code down. So let's say we were doing, there's a lot of reasons why we do that. It's easier for me to understand the code. If we look at that, if I was presented with that program, 
the program is checked for number is prime, it runs prime checker. I can see exactly what the program does. It prints out true or false after checking if number is prime. So it's much easier to understand. It also makes team programming a lot easier because if groups of people, different people are writing different modules, then they all get their modules written and then we can join the code together. Whereas if we're all working on the same 100,000 lines of code and I had a copy and you had a copy, it could be very messy. It is it has shown to improve the quality of code and as I mentioned already, we don't reinvent the wheel, so we, we reuse the same code. Once we get any program working, we should wrap it up in a module or a method and then we can use it over and over again. Thinking about the Fibonacci or the prime number thing for a moment, there are uh, two cases where I would typically have a prime checker. Um, in maths, there's something called the Goldback conjecture that says that every even number greater than two is the sum of two primes. So, well, two is one plus one, four is three plus one, six is three plus three, which are both primes, eight is one plus seven. So every even number can be calculated as the sum of two primes. So if I have my prime checker, that would, would be part of the code to check Goldbach's conjecture. But I wouldn't want to be printing out it is prime or is not prime every time. So I'm just checking if it's prime or not. It's also another um, theorem in large number theory called the twin prime theorem, which says that there are a number of primes that have a twin that is two digits higher than that prime. So for example, the numbers three and five are both prime difference of two. Numbers five and seven are prime difference of two. 11 and 13 are prime difference of two. 17 and 19, 29 and 31, 41 and 43, 59 and 61, 71 and 73, 101, 103, 107, 109, 137, 139, etc., etc. And that goes on infinitely large numbers of twin primes. As it happens, for some strange reason, even though the distance between prime numbers increases significantly, you'll always, you'll frequently find, by adding two onto a prime number, you'll find another prime number right, right near beside it. So if I was writing a program to explore twin primes, what I might do is, call my prime checker module, uh, check if number is prime, then I'll say add two onto that, check, call my module checker again, check if that is prime, and if they're both primes then I'll can just say, well there you go, we've got another set of twin primes. So modularization is really neat in terms of wrapping code up, and if we write any nice bit of code, let's wrap it up in a module. Thanks very much, we'll see you on the next episode.